Lunatics, welcome back to the channel. Today we're fishing big crankbaits in deep water and we're catching some fish doing it. The equipment that you have when you're fishing those deep crankbaits really does matter. And I'm gonna go into all that kind of stuff in today's video. We're gonna see some fish that I caught throwing the six cents Cloud 9 C25, that thing gets down to 25 foot. And um, you're gonna see some fish that I caught on it and then we're gonna talk all about the equipment that you need when it comes to throwing those big crankbaits down in deep water, how to not get snagged, how to make sure that you're fishing it correctly, how to fish it through the cover. We're all talking about all that kind of stuff in today's video. So make sure to watch it all the way through because we're gonna see some fish catches and then we're gonna talk about all that stuff at the end of today's video. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. If you like today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And any questions or anything that I don't cover in today's video and you still have some questions, make sure to drop those questions down in the comments and I will answer them. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. There's one. Fish on. Oh yeah. Fish on. That's rad. Oh yeah. Get in the boat. Oh yeah. Boom. There we go. On the big old 25 footer. There we go. There we go. Check that out. Right there. Right there. C25 getting it done. That was rad. That was rad. So cool. Not as big as I thought he was going to be, but I'll take it. It was still pretty fun to catch that fish on that on that big crankbait. See you later. There's one. That's a good one. That was a good one. There's one. This one smoked it. Stay on, fish. Stay on there. Stay on, stay on. Get in the yeah! That was rad. That was rad. Look at that. Look at that fish. That's not a big one, but that's super fun. This guy came out of those trees just hammered it that was cool super cool so what i'm trying to do with this crankbait is make as long as a, of a cast as i can crank it down to the depth that it's supposed to go as fast as possible so i can get it in the strike zone as long as possible and then just reel it super slow because there's a lot of trees down there and what I want is for this crankbait to just kind of tick the top of these trees because those fish are sitting in there and they'll think it's a shad going through those tree limbs and they'll just come out of there and smoke it. And I think that's what these last two have done because it's kind of been on the change as the crankbait's on its way back up to the boat because they've both ate it kind of as it's right before it starts to come right back up to the boat. And uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it's a really cool bite, but you got to just thread this thing kind of through those trees. It's not that easy to do, but uh, it, it's a good way to lose a lot of crankbaits. But if you can do it and really just slowly feel that thing go through, almost like you're fishing a worm, sort of, just kind of go through real slow through those trees. You can get it through most of the time. I mean, you are going to lose some crankbaits fishing it, a crankbait through the brush like this. But... Um, but it can pay off because not a lot of other people are doing that. That was pretty rad to catch those fish. Um, I just got that rod specifically to throw those big crankbait with. And um, I'm really liking it. It's the uh, eight foot Lux uh, Cloud9 cranking rod. It's the, uh, for the heavy ones, it's for like the 20 and 25 footers. And uh, I got a six three to one gear ratio reel on it. I'm really happy with it so far. 
caught a couple fish on it so can't ask for more than that i'm gonna go try to hit up some more spots where there's some rocks that don't quite have as much brush there's brush pretty much everywhere around here so i'm definitely going to be still really having to feel that that crankbait through those brush piles because if i don't and i just start cranking through there it's going to get snagged and i'm going to break off a ton of them um i do get hung up a lot so if you decide to come out and try to do this yourself you're going to get hung up a lot you might go through some crankbaits doing it but it can definitely pay off if you're able to really feel your way through those brush piles if it feels like it's stuck don't try to yank it out of there just click the bail so that way it gives it some slack because sometimes that fill of the crankbait stuck on that tree limb and when you give it that slack it'll start to float back up and you can start reeling again sometimes you really got to pop it loose a little bit other times you're just gonna have to yank on it and hope it comes out or you end up breaking off but it is what it is unfortunately but sometimes that's what it takes to catch some above average fish i'm surprised that the fish i have caught weren't a lot bigger but um I'll take them. It, it was still a fun way to catch them, but uh, hopefully I can uh, get a couple more before the day's done. There's one, there's one, right on those rocks. I could feel that thing going over the rocks. Stay on, stay on fish. That's so rad. Stay on there, get in the boat. There we go, there we go, there we go. That's awesome, check that out guys. Like that, it's so fun. Don't hook me, fish. Solid fish right there. Solid fish. You know, guys, this is a pretty rad day so far. I'm. This is such a fun way to catch them. Just grinding this big crankbait over these rocks, through this brush, and every fish just feels giant when you when you hook one. And right, oh, I just came loose. So you probably couldn't tell what I did right there, but I was just being gentle, just bringing this thing over those rocks, the brush, whatever's down there, because it'll you'll feel it stop, but you're not necessarily stuck on it yet. It just bumped into something, and all you need to do is just let that thing kind of get some slack, change the angle that the bait's at, and it'll come right over that structure a lot of times. Sometimes it'll be stuck, but other times you'll be able to just get this thing right out. So another thing you guys want to do when you're throwing big crankbaits like this is you want to check your line a lot because when you're grinding this thing through the rocks, the brush and stuff like that, your line's going to get nicked up. It's going to get shredded up. So you definitely need to pay attention to your line. Make sure you have fresh line, new knots, all that kind of stuff because it will make a difference in how many fish you end up catching, um, whether you break off or not because this thing's gonna, it's going through all this nasty stuff. Like I can feel it going through stuff right now. And um, pretty much after every fish I've caught, I'll retie. It doesn't take very long and it's definitely worth doing because you don't want to break off a good fish because these big crankbaits like this, you never know that one bite could be, could be a giant, could be a personal best. It could be, you know, there's a tournament winner. You just never know. This is a big fish bait. And as you can see, you can catch, you know, the, the average size fish as well, but you just never know. You could catch a 10 pounder on this thing, no problem. So just make sure your equipment's ready to go. You know, make sure that line doesn't have nicks in it, have fresh line, all that kind of stuff to make sure that you're giving yourself the best chance you can at catching that giant. So what I do right now is I wanna to talk to you guys about the equipment that I'm using to throw this big C25 crankbait from Six Sense. This is the Cloud9 C25 crankbait. I really, really like these 
Uh, I've caught a bunch of fish on them and uh, this thing will get down to 25 foot. Um, if you have lighter line, you might be able to get it down to that 30 foot zone, but it's designed to hit that 25 foot depth. Um, I leave the stock hooks on this thing. Six cents comes with really sharp hooks. I've almost hooked myself plenty of times. Um, so I use the stock hooks that, that come. Um, stock split ring as well. You just want to make sure that you don't tie in the middle section of the split ring where there's only the the one wire right there because you can end up your line can slip and then snag one of the other ends and then cut your line so make sure that you tie it over the double wire so that way you don't have any slippage or anything like that um what i got it paired up with today is the eight foot lux meet a heavy action mod fast this is designed this rod is designed for these big crankbaits the 20 and 25 footers um, again it's the six cents lux eight foot heavy mod fast action um, it's rated for 12 to 25 pound test and baits from half ounce up to two ounces i've got it paired up with the 200 series Corrado k in the 6.2 to 1 gear ratio um, I really like this reel for this. I would say this one or the Tatula SV would be great. I like the oversized handles when you're cranking these big crankbaits. Um, it, it, you wanna, gonna, you're gonna wanna use fluorocarbon line. Um, this is probably 14 pound test. I don't remember exactly what I put on here, but most likely it's gonna be that 14 pound test. Um, I like to do 14 pound instead of 12 with these bigger baits, just so that way when you're grinding this thing through the rocks, when you're grinding it through the trees, you're you got a little bit more thickness than you do with 12 pound test. So if you get any of those nicks or anything like that while you're fishing, you catch one, you got a better chance of landing that fish. Now, when it comes to catching a fish or fishing around rocks or fishing around trees, you wanna continually, continuously check your line for any kind of nicks, abrasions or anything like that because you're putting a lot of stress on your line. This thing does give you some drag while you're fishing it. You're, dry, you're trying to fish it through all that cover, so you definitely want to make sure that you're checking your line. Retie after all, every fish. If you notice any of those nicks or scratches in this section of the line, make sure to retie. Um, I think that that's really, really key because if you don't retie, you're going to end up casting this thing off. You're going to break it off down the trees. You're going to finally get that bite, and you're not going to be able to land that fish because it breaks your line off, and it could have been prevented by just, by just retying. Now, when it comes to the line, with your fluorocarbon line, I'd say go with you know your Seaguar or your Sunline. Those are pretty much the two that I that I use most of the time. Um, I like that 14 pound test, like I said, for for this size of a bait. Um, I really like having this specific model rod for these crankbaits because there is a lot of drag. Like I said, you're going to be driving dragging this thing through 25 foot of water. That's a big bill on here, so you need a rod that's going to be a little bit forgiving. That's going to do some of the work for you, or else you're going to burn yourself out and you're not going to be able to fish this for long periods of time. And you know, there's going to be those tough days where maybe you only get five bites on this, but they're the five right bites. So you need to have this thing in your hand all day long and you need to be able to fish this for long periods of time. So having the right rod is going to be paramount along with having the right reel. You don't really want a really high speed gear ratio reel because it's going to make it a little bit more work for you to fish this thing. So a lower gear ratio is going to be good. It's going to help you slow down this bait also when you get it down into the strike zone. And then a lot of times I've noticed that you want to get this thing down as fast as you can and keep it in that strike zone for as long as possible. So what I like to do is I like to reel it fast to get it down to the depth and then I really slow down. And I want to feel all the rock, I want to feel all the brush, and if you start to feel yourself get snagged, stop reeling. That's the key because if you keep reeling through all that stuff, you're going to end up getting snagged. You're, end up, you're going to end up breaking these off. So reel it slow, work it through the rock, work it through the brush, just like you would with a worm, just like you would on a Texas rig or a Carolina rig or something like that. You're gonna work this thing through that. Sometimes that means you're gonna have to just stop reeling, let that thing float back up and let it keep going. Because a lot of times this crankbait is gonna be going through the water and it's gonna be nose down like this it's gonna to come to that brush pile and it's gonna stick there. And as you keep giving it that pressure, it's not gonna go anywhere. But if you stop reeling, it'll start to float back up and then you'll come free and then you'll be able to keep going. So that'll save you some baits, that'll save you some snags. And the same thing goes for rocks. You can kind of tell the difference between the rock and the brush while you're down there. And when you're feeling that brush, 
or when you're feeling that rock, you just want to really slowly grind that thing over there, feel each individual rock, and then you're going to be able to tell the difference also between the bite and that cover. So I think if you pair this bait up with the right equipment, fish it effectively, you're going to get a lot more bites than you're used to. Um, I've put a lot of time in this year in the crankbait fishing and I'm a lot more confident in it. I know what I'm looking for when I go out to the lake and I fish this thing. So I think that if you put your time in as well and start learning some of these nuances that I'm explaining to you guys today, you're going to love throwing crankbaits even more than you already do. Well guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching me catch some of these crankbait fish. It was super fun to be out here. It was super fun to throw this big bait and get some of those bites. Um, you never know when it's gonna be a giant that ends up going over here and smashing this thing. Um, you could catch a 10 pounder easily on one of these baits. Um, super fun way to fish not the easiest way to fish so you got to put your time in and be willing to lose some of these baits because you will end up snagging because if you're not snagging a crankbait ever you're not fishing in the right places it's kind of like fishing a jig if you're not losing jigs ever you're not fishing those jigs in the right places now if you fish them correctly you can get yourself through a lot of that structure a lot of that cover and not lose as many but if you're fishing these baits where the fish are you're going to end up losing some so just be prepared for that when you when you go out and you start trying this technique throwing these big crankbaits down in that deep water through that nasty stuff that's where the fish are that's where your bait needs to be but just fish slow fish methodically fish through that stuff if you start to feel yourself get snagged stop reeling let that bait float back up don't start yanking on it don't start pulling it through because that's when you're definitely going to get snagged and you're not going to get that thing out you just want to feel it run into it come up and over it it doesn't have to just smash it you want it to deflect but you also want it to basically come up and over that structure because if you get snagged down there you're not doing yourself any kind of favors you're going to end up coming up over on top of that brush pile and start yanking on it and you're going to just disturb that whole environment down there anyway so just take your time work that bait through that structure through that brush through that cover and you're going to save yourself some baits and you're going to get a lot more bites so i hope today's video was informative i hope you enjoyed it and I hope you guys subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. And if you like today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. All that stuff really helps my channel. Let's grow this thing. Let's get this channel huge, just like some of the other fishing channels here on you guys' time. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.